This is the Krill Cast. I'm Chris. And I'm Will. And I'm John. And I promise we didn't pick Pac-Man because it matches our colors, but <laughs> it kind of does. It kind of does. Um, John, why don't you tell everybody about your YouTube channel? Yeah, my name is John, um, and I'm sorry if you skipped over the last episode, last part of the, you know, I'm just going to go into my next 45 minutes of who I am again. Um, <laughs> no, my name is John. I make music. I live in Portland, Oregon. Uh, you can check out our, our YouTube channel, and uh, it's a place where I make fun videos and music videos and enjoy being creative. You can find us on Spotify and all that stuff, too. Definitely go uh, check out their music. You know, at least give it one listen. All right, that's my challenge to you today. <laughs> go listen to his music at least once. Prom- I promise <laughs> you, once. you won't be disappointed. <laughs> I can't um, make that promise. <laughs> <laughs> if you like the music I like, which you're gonna find out what I like on Friday, um, yeah. definitely you'll like his stuff. Um, there you go. <laughs> today is Throwback Thursday, so we're gonna be covering Pac-Man because it's vast or vastly quickly approaching its 40th anniversary um by the time this video comes out we'll be about eight days away eight days away from its 40th anniversary believe it or not so this game is almost 40 years old crazy um (laughs) originally it was released the arcade version which uh if you get that arcade one up machine you gotta let me know send me a video of that thing okay i want to see this thing in action they're doing a 40th anniversary one Ooh. That'll be cool. Yeah, you can you can pre-order it right now. <laughs> Is that why your wallet's hurting? I uh, <laughs> want, I want it. <laughs> anyway, so it was released on May twenty second, nineteen eighty. Um, it was released in the United States in December of nineteen eighty. So no matter where you live in the world, it's approaching forty years old this mm-hmm. year. Um, so if you can, you want to find this information, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to flat out tell you Wikipedia is where I got a lot of the information here, but a lot of people don't <laughs> feel like looking it up. So I'll just tell you all about it. The original <laughs> Japanese title of puck man was changed to Pac-Man for international releases as a preventative measure against the defacement of the arcade machines by changing the P <laughs> to an F. <laughs> that would definitely happen. <laughs> no one would have done that, right? No. <laughs> <laughs> Outside Japan, the game was published by Midway Games as part of its licensing agreement with Namco America. Midway. The player, the What? Midway. I just didn't realize that they published it first. Yeah, yeah, because Namco wasn't like a household name at the time, so mm-hmm. they, they went through Midway. Um, the player controls Pac-Man, who must eat all the dots inside an enclosed maze while avoiding four colored ghosts. I'm telling you this as if you've never played Pac-Man or seen it before. So I guess if you're <laughs> blind, this would be a good description for you. So you eat the large flashing dots called power pellets, which causes the ghosts to turn blue, allowing Pac-Man to eat them for bonus points. I did not know they were called power pellets. That's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> Development of the game began in early 1979 by Toru Iwatani with a nine-man team. Iwatani wanted to create a game that could appeal to women as well as men because most video games of the times had themes of war or sports. Yeah, that is pretty true, actually. Yeah, that's true. Although the inspiration (laughs) for Pac-Man character uh, was reportedly the image of a pizza with a slice removed. I can totally see that. Brilliant. (laughs) Iwatani said he also rounded out the Japanese symbol kuchi, which I'm not making this up, but it means mouth. Um, Hmm. The Pac-Man video game franchise remains one of the highest grossing and best-selling game series of all time, generating more than $14 billion in revenue as of 2016. So here we are, four years later, I'm sure it's higher. Um, And $43 million in sales combined. Um, I'm not sure... (laughs) That's a weird number, $43 million versus $14 billion. I wonder if that includes, like, merchandise and, like, you know, TV appearances and stuff like that. Yeah, maybe. The character of Pac-Man is the mascot and flagship icon of Bandai Namco Entertainment and has the highest brand awareness of any video game character in North America, although I have to say I think Mario might be more recognizable, but I could be surprised. I mean, that's not actually information on Wikipedia. Wikipedia says Pac-Man is most recognized. I think Mario might actually be more, but who's to say? Um, There's actually a giant list of Pac-Man games. Um, I'm going to pull it up just for us to look at real quick. I'm going to pull it up on the screen here if I can make the window pop up without being in front of everybody else. Okay, this is being... Oh, and it happened. That's <laughs> we'll what I was afraid later. of. We're week. gone. It's just the, the uh, Christmas show now. All right, so here's the list of Pac-Man uh, video games. So I, I'm just going to show you guys how expansive this list is. I mean, this is a long list of re-releases and remakes mm-hmm. and sequels. There is so 
many versions of Pac-Man. Almost as many versions as Sonic. <laughs> <laughs> I think there's more of Pac-Man. I'm, I'm just kidding. Obviously, there's more. I'm still scrolling. This is how many releases of Pac-Man there are. Good grief. Yeah, and then we finally got through it. I mean, that took me, like, what, 10 seconds to scroll through, you know? Mm -hmm. That's insane. There's a lot of Pac-Man. So what I want to start with is, what was the first time each of us played a Pac-Man game? Yeah, I literally have no idea. I Pac-Man has always existed for me. It was, so I don't remember the first time because it was always part of my life. Um, it's almost it's like Snake. It's like, do you remember the first time you ever played Snake? It's like it just always has been there. Probably on a um, calculator. Yeah, definitely on a calculator. I guess I, I don't know. I know like the first time I actually like tried to play it for like the high score was an arcade, and then I think what console did I first have it on? Was it on the original Game Boy? Uh, I think so. Then that would be the first time that I would have it at home for sure. It was either the, the original Game Boy or the Game Boy Color. I believe I had it on. Uh, how about there you, Jazz? Oh, yeah. My gosh, there it is. <laughs> I, I, I need that. I need that arcade one up. Arcade one up. Sponsor me. I'll make you a video in a, in a heartbeat. <laughs> I'll, um, I'm going to tag them on this video now. Please. Oh my gosh. Um, so my first. So I'm gonna say something. This is gonna be this is mind blowing. I am older than um, than than Pac-Man by two months. Oof! Uh, <laughs> I just turned forty this year. So congratulations! I, March, happy, happy thank you. Birthday. I made it. I made it. <laughs> but um, Pac-Man for me was um, uh, the first place I remember it was the mall arcade called the Gold Rush where I grew up in in, in, in Atlanta, uh, and I remember that because they also had Tron. <laughs> <laughs> The, the stand up, the stand up Tron. Um, anyway, yeah. So yeah, that was that was me as as old school arcade. I think I think Pac Man was on the, it was on the NES, but um, even before I played NES Pac Man, I remember going to like the movie theater and I'd always mm. see the Pac Man oh. and Miss Pac Man games just yeah. right next to each other, and I would just like just really want to go play those. They were always like the most fun sounds coming out of the machines. It was just so simple to just look at you. It's, okay, it's a guy going across eating dots. Like you want, like it's it's simple and and also intriguing because you're like, I want to play this. Like mm -hmm. this looks fun and it sounds fun. So I would go grab whatever quarters were in my pocket and go play it. You know, immediately before while waiting for the movie theaters to let us in, right? Which is so funny because I haven't been to a movie theater in probably like a year now. <laughs> well, we're never going back now. <laughs> yeah, they're done. <laughs> Yeah, but uh, to back up that point, Chris, Hollywood Movie Theater in Columbia, Missouri, that's when I first played the game. So it wasn't an arcade. It was actually in the movie theater. So yeah, that brought back a whole bunch of memories. That and air hockey. I used to play there all the time waiting wow. for the movies. Oh, throwback. Remember we played it at Dave & Buster's? Mm -hmm. in oh, yeah. That was actually one of my favorite, probably actually my favorite version of Pac-Man on that gigantic screen and the detached controller that was really cool that's one of our old style videos from forever ago before we rebranded <laughs> that's that was uh that's a throwback i'm gonna see if i can find this video go ahead john what do you got you got something else on that uh no i just i think about the all the places i have played pac-man though it was it was definitely the arcade first but then there was uh the our grocery store our kroger had one uh, had like a, a few arcade machines they had um they had Paperboy, and uh, and then they had Pac-Man, and then also at the ice skating rink they had Pac-Man, um, which was uh, yeah. So like in the in the roller skating rink, so Pac-Man was everywhere uh, <laughs> for my old for, for my old self. <laughs> it really is. I mean, Pac-Man is probably one of the most common cabinets to have in any place that you had an arcade. Yeah. Yeah, so this is the setup I want in my basement right here. <laughs> it's like the whole wall. Yes. <laughs> it was... There's a wow, there's a place here in Portland called um there's two arcades. They're called Barcades. There's um Quarter World, which is one of my favorites, and also Ground Control, and they have massive Pac-Man things like that. Have and you ever they're... gone to PAX? I have not gone to PAX. Um I have decided against diseases. And uh, no, I'm just kidding. Um, um, no, I haven't gone to PAX. I almost went to one when I was back on the East Coast, but um, I've been. I, I have wanted to go to one for sure. Isn't there one in? Um, oh no, it's in Seattle. It's in yeah. Seattle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Obviously, right now is not a good time. No, no. But, but in general, large gatherings. In general, uh, <laughs> um, I think that one's one of the biggest. 
I think the Seattle. Oh, really? Is. Yeah. Oh, cool. Um, but yeah, uh, I was going to say, when we went to Dave and Buster's, you would probably appreciate this. There's that Halo cabinet, too, there. Um, really? Fireteam yeah, Raven. It is a lot of fun. It's an on-rails yeah, Halo co-op game. You can have up okay. to four people playing at once with actual guns. So it's, it's like Time Crisis? Let me see if I... Oh, we don't have, we don't have it in the video. I forgot. Uh, definitely recommend it. It's so much fun. Oh, cool. It's an on-rails yeah, like Halo shooter. Oh, okay. I didn't know what Time Crisis was. I apologize. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Time Crisis 2. I, <clears throat> I spent too much money on instead of college. In <laughs> class. Good to know. So, yeah, that video's got 32 views. Um, <laughs> definitely don't watch that video, but that was a good example of the Pac-Man game we played. And I set the high score on that yeah. video. Yeah, he did. That's right. I forgot about that. So these guys are still building the cabin. This is a head-to-head -head Pac-Man game. That's cool. Sorry um, about the sirens. <laughs> I got now. <laughs> All right. So I just want to talk about a game like Pac-Man. What is the legacy and the staying power behind a game kind of simple as like Pac-Man? Like what, what do you guys see as what's what's the reason that this game has held up this long? The thing is, it's, I don't know, it's just, it's simple enough that, and it's ubiquitous enough that everyone has played it. Like, have you ever met someone that has not played Pac-Man? <laughs> a <laughs> few, a few people. A few people. Yeah. Really? I'm surprised by that. I don't think I know anyone. They're like my and, grandparents' age, but... Okay, okay fair. People <laughs> like our age and younger, um, to the point where you can actually play games. But uh, just the staying power is... Have you seen the Bandersnatch Netflix show? No. No? So they actually have a whole scene talking about Pac-Man. And, you know, it's a brand new show, and it's just the fact that, you know, even in pop culture now, we're still talking about Pac-Man. And he desc describes like this whole parallel universe thing, the via Pac-Man. Like he's actually, like it, it, you think it's a fun game, but it's actually torture for him because he's stuck in this this world and he's forced to eat and chased by ghosts that are probably his, like his own imagination, and he can't get out <laughs> of the world because like if he goes off the side, what happens? He goes right back into the maze. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, it's honestly it's fascinating. It's completely changed the way I look at the game, but. Just, I mean, that's a new show, and they're still talking about it, and they're using it as, you know, everyone should know what Pac-Man is. We're, we're going to bring this up. So I, I think that's part of the staying power is just how simple it was, and also it came out right in the boom of the arcades. Mm -hmm. So I think that was a perfect time for it. And um, I don't know. It's it's hard for me because this game's always existed for me, so I didn't see it, uh, you know, explode. It's just, it was already big when I was born. So Right. Uh, I think... Uh, and John, you jump in now if you want. I can I can wait if you'd like to say something. Uh, no, I you you go for it. I've got I'm just gathering my thoughts on it because I okay. I definitely have a, a, ideas of, about the legacy and staying power for sure. I think Pac Man sells itself on nostalgia in the right ways. A lot of times when a game series tries to sell you on nostalgia, they just kind of go in it with like a monetary mindset. Whereas I think Pac Man has never tried to reinvent itself as something it isn't they keep re-releasing the original they they release it untouched un un what's the right word i'm trying to use untainted mm -hmm. um it's still exactly what it is it still has gameplay that holds up and because it's pixel art pixel art scales really well it's like a scalable mm -hmm. vector graphic pixels scale 3d models have a hard time scaling in the same way that a lot of these old retro games have no issue with whatsoever I can scale up an SNES game, and with current modifications to emulation software, you can actually have a widescreen SNES game, which is pretty mm -hmm. cool. Pixel art is always scalable, which means you can always re-release it. And I think that's one of the things going for Pac-Man is it's literally that. It has that going for it. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it's such I, a simple I, and entertaining game. It, it definitely is. And what I... The things that I think when we were talking about Fortnite earlier, Pac-Man is a is a genre definer. It's, yeah. It is. It is an arcade. It is the arcade that when you think of an arcade, you think of Pac-Man. Um, and so, like in that sense, you know, what is Fortnite to Pac-Man? Who knows, right? Like I'm not going to say it's going to be as big as Pac-Man, uh, but uh, or stay as long as that. But it is that in that same kind of category of of that. But what I think I like to think about is the the simplicity of the gameplay for me. Um, it's it's they it's perfectly honed um and i think about that you don't have to have like the most amazing graphics you don't have to have there i mean there's not even there's barely a story to pac-man um <laughs> you know so like but what they have is fun gameplay that's simple uh and i think about like the games that 
I think about that have staying power for me. Now, some of them are definitely have cool stories and stuff, but I even think about the first Halo. That was the first shooter, uh, console shooter that worked for me with a, with a controller. And then also, um, but to bring it up to more, to more quote unquote modern times, Celeste uh, is one of my favorite games that's been released in a mm-hmm. long time because th- it's a simple game with perfect controls. Tony Hawk, uh, Tony Hawk Pro Skaters, the one through three, the same way. Like mm-hmm. they had these super, super refined simplicity uh, with, but complexity in their controls. And that's a hard thing to find balance in. Pac-Man is, was the, was the OG for that, you know? Uh, and, and that to me is, is, you know, it just says that, you know, experience trumps visuals most of the time. Yeah, I would say, like, if there were, like, four arcade games I would name, anytime somebody asks me, like, what games are in the arcade, my top four are Tetris, Pac-Man, Donkey Kong, and Galaga. Yeah. Those are the four I always Mortal think Kombat. of. See, I'm not really into the fighting games, so for me, I wouldn't think of those. <laughs> <laughs> Killer I would Instinct. Throw, I would think I would of Killer throw, Instinct. I'd throw Ninja Turtles. I'd throw the t- Turtles uh, in Time in there. Yeah. I forgot, because I played that, like, a <laughs> NES version or SNES yeah. version of that. I forgot that it, it was in the arcades. See, that's the mm-hmm. problem. People don't associate that necessarily with the arcades. They associate it right. with when they play, first played it. For me, that was on the console. But mm-hmm. Pac-Man is so iconically an arcade game. Yeah. Mm. Absolutely. Yeah, I love and it. And I'm just that... watching this video, and I'm just so jealous that you guys have that. <laughs> <laughs> and when I think about it, um, the arcade games actually scaled better for mobile phones when the arcade store, the app stores first went out because they had that longer screen a lot of times, like a pinball yeah. machine almost. So it was probably a lot easier to scale this type of game to iOS or Android when it first came out because Pac-Man was one of the first games to come to the Android market. If you didn't know. Um, I did not. I didn't know this. So what is the... What is the future of Pac-Man? Do we think that the impact of the industry will continue to bring Pac-Man to future consoles for the foreseeable future? Yeah, I don't see why not. I mean, I think there's always, at least for a while, until people who have played the original die off, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> like, I mean, you said it lives off nostalgia. I think it's a good game, even without the nostalgia. Oh, yeah. But, I mean, that's definitely going to drive a lot of those sales. So, I mean, for the f- foreseeable future, yeah. I mean... It sells well. It's being released on everything. Uh, you can probably play on your calculators now nowadays. And um, if it, as long as it keeps selling like that, it's going to do well. And whether or not that's going to continue once you know, like our generation's gone, I'm not sure. But maybe. <laughs> yeah, uh, maybe the only thing I could see is um, there. Someone's going to try to do a very very poor VR port of it, and it won't work. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's the, other than that, they're just gonna leave it alone because you know it's a masterpiece. It's a, mm-hmm. again, it's 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 a genre definer. It's, you don't you don't mess with it. Is that like a 3D weird Pac-Man game? I don't think yeah, I ever played that one. I didn't play that. That does not look good. Looks like they're playing in like a Legos Lego set. Yeah. yeah. Huh. Definitely, and you can jump. That's even more bizarre. Why would you jump over power-ups? Anyways, <laughs> um, what I was gonna say. Uh, for the my closing little thought here is Pac-Man was in Super Smash Bros. So <laughs> there's that. That's it. That's your closing thought. <laughs> He's an icon. He's an icon. Man. He is. He is. You make it to Smash Brothers. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Unlike the bajillion Fire Emblem characters, he's not a Nintendo <laughs> property. So the fact mm-hmm. that he's in there means something. Yeah. Wait, so. was he the first non-Nintendo property? Or I don't. No? I don't think so. I'm not. Pos- I don't quote me on that. I don't know the answer. Okay. Um, but. Anyways, um, as always, I'm Chris. And I'm Will. And I'm John. And uh, we'll see you on the next Krillcast. Bye, guys. Bye.